certainty of all the other factors. So basically it also talks about just the larger idea of when it comes to natural disasters and mother nature and all that type of stuff, um, there's a huge role of uncertainty because at the end of the day you, you, know, you can try to predict it, who knows, I guess, I don't know. Um, but in any case, um, the gauges were screwed up. So then uh, they basically uh, have the you make the call and then the summary and in the summary again it's, it's uh, basically says uh, that the National Weather Service uh, failed to take into account all the variances of the flood levels. Uh, as a result, certain communication did not take into account the unpredictability. The public was confused. Um, so again, sort of another two first example, second example, sort of, ah, these folks didn't do too well when it comes to uncertainty. Then we move to, oh, by the way, I have some extra things on the PowerPoint just because it's fun. Uh, there's Paul Bunyan and Bay of the Blue Ox and me. This is Bemenji, Minnesota. It was cold. Um, Bemenji, And then the next slide, that's a picture of Taylor Cup Harvest. It's good. I imagine some people probably ate that during the flood. I am uncertain. <laughs> that is a visual metaphor of the discourse of the media. Okay, 9-11, the next example. Um, I was gonna offer my little story here. Everybody has a story. Um, uh, when I, uh, I was actually teaching, uh, go figure, a uh, public speaking class, and I was at Wedland uh, College in Macon, Georgia at the time, um, and, uh, and I heard about it on the news, actually, like, students wanted to watch everything, but I was like, nah, nah, you know, it's just some sort of accident, um, so much like what they were talking about in the, uh, uh, in the book, you know, my, my first gut reaction was, was some sort of weird fluke accident and, um, and then of course after class um, is when uh, everything sort of literally collapsed um, so it talks about the context and uncertainty folks didn't know what was going on and I'll let you read that it talks about Matt Lauer and still I mean just basically um, it was a, a heightened moment of, of uncertainty in lots of different ways um, because the initial reports were sort of, you know, people didn't know what was going on. Um, and then there were issues of uncertainty about who, who had died, how many had died, who was responsible. Uh, are there going to be more attacks? Uh, can we fly? I mean, it was just, a, as you might remember, a traumatic, traumatic moment of uncertainty. Um, so uh, there has been some studies of about what was going on there, and that's sort of the next important uh, information. Um, and this is the you know, one, two, three, fourth paragraph of that uh, section of the, the when the, and this is just one, one section. They don't have separate sections here. But the fourth paragraph, one study of the 9-11 attack reported that the information most wanted by the public related to the cause of the disaster. Uh, additional threats, the level of damage, and the event's implications. The same study found that the average person spent over eight hours on that day searching for information by watching TV, listening to the radio. I remember doing that. Uh, of course, the internet was not as prominent now. I mean, it was, it was but not, you know, but in any case, I mean, this is pre-Facebook and all this type of stuff. Um, but it's really, really interesting um, case study so far as you know, people trying to get information in this wanting certainty in this very, very uncertain time. Um, and even uh, when uh, President Bush, and I remember watching this, uh, his speech uh, afterwards, I mean, he, they didn't know what went on. Of course, there's, you know, there's controversy, there's, there's conspiracies out there, but you know, they saw this coming or they knew something was coming, they weren't doing it, uh, enough to, to, um, to combat it or to, you know, I don't know anything about all that type of stuff so I'll stick with what the book has to say but if you wanted to do more information go do more information but always always 
would be very, very um, wary of conspiracy theorists. No. No. Don't get me started. Some people are just stupid. Uh, but in any case, um, so then what they do is they turn to Mayor Giuliani as a case study example of somebody who uh, effectively communicated during a very uncertain time. Um, and I'll, I'll let you sort of read that. Uh, but it's just, it talks about how even in these moments of uncertainty, um, he uh, was out there um, and... Uh, uh, well, before they, they, one of the things they, they do before they talk about Giuliani uh, was just also the idea of that they did, in fact, uh, do simulations and they trained for, for stuff like this. But one of the things that I thought was so interesting about um, this paragraph where they're sort of uh, talking about Giuliani and uh, everything that he did, um, they talked about how you know, he spoke to the press several times a day, even though he, he didn't have all the information. Uh, he was also very emotional, often very um, angry when he talked about the attacks. At time, as time went on, the more information became available. He shared the emerging details with the public. His reassuring tone and manner helped New Yorkers and the rest of the country. Um, and there's some really nice quotes here. One of the things uh, that I think is really interesting, um, and this also ties back to one of the things that Senator Tim Kaine said when we talked about Virginia Tech. I know. Some of you were there here in my day class and you're watching it. Well, I know some of you in the evening, but he talked about how um, he was in, uh, I can't remember what it was, he was either in China or Japan or something like that, or India or something, and flew back. But he went and he spoke to all the families. Um, and uh, after the, the Virginia Tech shooting, and he talked about how the part of crisis uh, management that I take crisis communication is as, as an official showing that you genuinely care um, and so uh, that's a lot of things that I think that, that's really really important during moments of uncertainty um, showing that you uh, care about human beings and what they're going through um, I think is, is good crisis communication um, and then they turned on to um, uh, the uh, and that was sort of the top paragraph of page 19 idea of caring and then they moved on to talk about lessons of leadership uh, Giuliani's book um, talking about uh, communicating the strong values and beliefs etc etc um, and I'll let you sort of read that but uh, a lot of people liked his communication style he was available and candid and blunt people like that type of stuff and then there's a summary again after a word like they got the you make the call uh, but uh, our authors obviously are very high on uh, Mayor Giuliani as an example of effective crisis communication during moments of uncertainty. In part, this is because leaders like Mayor Giuliani, or it's talked about you know, pulling the U.S. together during this huge moment of uncertainty, but because he spoke directly and often to the public, even though there was tremendous uncertainty about who caused the crisis and what would happen next, Mayor Giuliani was able to manage the uncertainty effectively. So. Next, driving King's car. The King car response to the 2008 Melamine, Melamine. So they talk about the context uh, and all the, uh, the stuff about the inflate their protein levels, people got sick. Um, the Chinese government was slow to respond, did not have any problems. But, so that's the large con uh, content, uh, context, uh, dogs and cats begin to experience kidney failure, you know, 300,000 infants became ill, six died, uh, and because all this stuff came from this Chinese dairy product company, Sanbu. Um, so, but this is not necessarily about that Chinese company, it is about King Car, which is a Taiwanese uh, food company that imported the Chinese-based ingredients for its milk products. Um, and so one of the things uh, that uh, they talk about is how um, they're a little bit, they praise King Carr, but they're also a little bit um, 
critical of them. You actually have to go to the summary to find out that they're critical because if you just read their case study, it sounds like, ooh, yeah, King Carter did a great job. But it talks about how the Taiwanese Department of Health emphasized a strong food testing system in their initial communications and tried to minimize concern and reassure the public about the strong food safety. However, uh, people were apparently just still getting sick. And so uh, uh, Mr. Lee, who was the chairman um, of King Carr, um, explained that uh, they, cause they saw levels and so um, they, they tested it themselves. Um, because of the uncertainty, so they wanted to retest it, and then, um, then of course they found after testing the product was complete, King Card determined that in fact this milk product contained exceptionally an exceptionally high level of melamine, even though the Taiwanese government tested these products. So basically, the Taiwanese government screwed up. So that's what it made to do to replace blame on the Taiwanese government. But at the same time, King Card was like, oh well, the, the government's testing it's all fine, cool, yeah, but. So they did take the responsibility previous to this without, by not doing their own testing. But in any case. So then they talk about um, Lee's vision. Um, it talked about he told his senior management there were no limits on the budget for fixing the crisis. Um, King Carr had worked 50 years to gain the trust of its customers. Um, and as soon as they found out that their products were uh, contaminated, they immediately tried to get uh, uh, results to a second lab to just you know, make sure everything it was correct. Um, King Carr could have taken the word of Taiwanese government, but they didn't. Or maybe they should not have in the first place. I don't know. Then it moves on to the initial crisis response. Uh, talked about how the company immediately engaged the public with information. They notified the Taiwanese Department of Health about the contamination. Uh, uh, King Carr did media reports to inform the public. Um, King Carr wanted to apologize, blah, blah, blah. Um, Lynn explains that King Carr chose to public, publicize these contaminated products before the Taiwanese government's test had identified high levels of melamine, melamine whatever. Without King Carr's own testing and quick communication, the crisis would have most certainly been much worse. So. Then they did this big, huge recall, um, which was really, really important. Uh, they had a, a strong, said over time, King Car had developed strong, positive relationships with retailers. And as a result, the company was able to recall over 95% of its project products in three days. And then as uh, within a week, almost 100% of its products were recalled. They had toll free numbers again, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then finally, King Carr invited reporters to his plan to see that the recall products were being destroyed. The cost of recall was estimated at over $3 million. These actions received widespread critical acclaim uh, from the Taiwanese public media and scholars. Um, so they did a lot of uh, really cool things that have been really, really praised. And that's the next thing. They got critical acclaim. They did a lot better than, say, Nestle and United. Um, the Taiwanese buzz, uh, business magazine Business Today explained that the melamine crisis upset everybody. Yet. King Carr was the only organization willing to apologize and fix the problem. Um, so you know, they, they are highly praised for what they did. And then it's you make the call. But then, so they, they're sitting it up. Like, you know, in any case. Um, well, the summary is interesting. The King Carr crisis is a classic case of how threat, surprise, short response time, and uncertainty can impact decision making. Under the stress and uncertainty of the crisis, King Carr made a critical mistake by shifting blame for the crisis outside the organization, the Taiwanese government, like that, when the company had not checked to make sure that it was not responsible. King Carr would then capitalize on the uncertainty of the situation in the short term, but when an internal investigation revealed that the company's headquarters had received the new state standard, they quickly moved to acceptance and certainty. I don't know. It's sort of confusing. But basically they say they were good at some things and maybe not so good at other things. More ticking time bombs, I don't know. Do more research. Lay down to Yeah. Enron. Context. These are shady, shady characters. Ken Lay. Jeffrey Skilling. Skilling or Skilling? I can't remember. David Duncan. 